Hey guys, it's Elisa, and I'm going to show you how to grow your vocabulary with words that you already know. We're going to take small or easy words and we're going to turn them into big or harder words. And we're going to do this with our first word, accept. Here we go. So accept just means to agree to something that is offered. So if somebody gives you a pen, you take the pen, you have accepted the pen. So you might use this in a sentence and say something like, even though it was hard, I had to accept responsibility for what I did. Or you might say something like, do you accept the charges? Uh, so in this case, it's going to cost you money to do something. Do you accept that cost? Are you going to agree to take it? So let's talk about some synonyms for this word. These are not all of the synonyms that exist, but these are some good ones. So we'll start with ones that basically mean the exact same thing and you can use interchangeably. So receive is the first one. So when you accept something, you receive it. So receive just means that you have been given something and you've accepted it. You've received it. Yep, I got it, thanks. So maybe somebody um, sends you a package. So the delivery man comes to your door. He's like, here's your package. And you're like, thank you. And you've received your package. You've accepted it. You have taken it. It was offered to you and you took it. So the next synonym we're going to go over is obtain. So in a sentence, you might say something like, hey, did you receive the gift that you were supposed to get? Or you might say, I haven't received the package yet. It was supposed to get here today. I had a package that was supposed to get here today and I have not received it yet. And I actually said those exact same words. All right. So our next word is obtain. So obtain means that you, you got something, you secured something. So in this case, in the cases before, when we were talking about accepting and receiving things, like someone gave them to us and we're like, thank you. Or someone didn't give them to us. Where is my package? And we were like, mm, no, thank you. But in this case, when we're talking about obtaining something, we went out and got it ourselves. So maybe someone gave it to us but we did something to initiate it we asked them for it like 20 times can i have this can i buy this from you so we have gone out and we've gotten it ourselves we went out and we obtained a degree so in order for you to obtain a degree you have to go to school you have to show up you have to sign up for classes you have to do the work so you're putting in the work you're putting in the time you have to pay money or get a scholarship or whatever it is that you have to do. You've obtained it. You went out and you did the thing. You obtained that degree. You put in the work to get it for yourself. So usually when we speak of the word obtain, we're not talking about little things. You know, we're not talking about like, I obtained a paperclip and a stapler from the store today. No, we're talking about things where you actually put in work to get it done. You can talk about obtaining something material, like tangible, a degree of course is material and tangible, but you put in a lot of work to get it. But when you're talking about obtain, you can also talk about obtain and you're getting like a document or so like a vaccine card, um, something like that that's very timely these days. So you need to obtain a vaccine card or you need to obtain paperwork showing that you've been vaccinated. So this is something a little more serious. It's not something small and frivolous like, um, I don't know, a glass or a sofa, um, something normal. Um, you know, something like that, like your immunization records, your vaccine records, your medical records, those are big, important things. Now you can also obtain uh, things that are historically important or just like bigger, like a map of something or an antique or something like that. That's usually when we use obtain. 
obtain is not used as often as, you know, get. I have to get a vaccine card for my child so they can start school. I've got to get my child vaccinated. Um, you wouldn't say I have to obtain vaccinations for my child. You could say that. I mean, technically, that is what the word means. But that's not usually how we say it. We usually use obtain for things where you've got to put in the work to get it, like a degree or an education or a job. Um, or if we're talking about something that's a little bigger, a little more serious, it doesn't have to be the most serious thing in the world. But usually the more serious it is, the more likely we are to use obtain. And the less serious it is, the more likely we are to use the word get or receive. Or accept. We usually accept it's like from your hands to my hands. I've accepted that. So that's kind of how those are a little bit different. So the next word that we're going to talk about is acquire. So when you acquire something, you buy or obtain it usually for yourself, but you can um, acquire something as a gift, but it comes through you first. So you're going to go out and you're going to buy something. Um, when you acquire something, it's usually something of value. So we're talking about things of value. It doesn't have to be technically, just by the, the words that are in the definition. But in reality, when we use the word acquire, we're usually talking about something that is expensive or something that's of importance, something that has sentimental or emotional value. It's not... I acquired some stamps today. I acquired some kale and spinach from the grocery store. No, 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 no. This is I acquired some land, some property. We definitely use acquired when we talk about real estate, property, houses. Acquired is definitely a word that is used. Bought, acquired, that's how we speak of those things. Um, when we're talking about antiques or paintings or those really expensive things, acquired is absolutely a word that is used, something really, really expensive, we tend to say, I've acquired this. Um, even though it means the same thing as I bought this, you can use them interchangeably. You can use one for the other, bought and acquire. Um, but when we use acquire, we tend to be talking about something that is just expensive or very valuable. There is an ambulance right now outside. I hope you can't hear it. So we're gonna shift a little bit now. So we're still talking about synonyms for accept, um, but we're gonna take a little bit of a turn. So our next word is undertake or undertaking. So when we accept something, so someone is giving it to us and we're like, yes, I'll take it, thank you. But when we are accepting something, the thing that we can be accepting might not be like a physical, tangible thing that you can hold in your hands. It might be a task, it might be a job, it might be doing something. And in that case, we might use the synonym undertake or undertaking. So an undertaking is a job or a task that has to be done. And undertaking's not a job like I'm a lawyer. It's gonna be a certain specific task associated with that. So when we talk about job, we mean in the smaller sense, we mean a task. So if you're going to take on an undertaking, then you are going to take on, accept something that usually is challenging. Not impossible, it doesn't have to be the hardest thing in the world, but there has to be something that's a little bit challenging about it for us to call it an undertaking. Maybe it's challenging because you don't have a lot of time. Maybe it's challenging because there's a lot of people involved. Maybe it's challenging because it's gonna be hard to get people to say yes to doing things, but there is something about it that's a little bit hard. Now you've decided You've agreed to take this on, so you feel like you can do it, but you also know there's going to be some challenges. You might think it's gonna be a really big challenge, or you might just think it's gonna be a teeny tiny small challenge. But whatever it is, you're gonna take it on, you've agreed to take it on. Usually the person who's given it to you is happy and grateful that you're doing it, but there's gonna be a little bit of a challenge because it's an undertaking. So in a sentence, you might say something like, I have decided to undertake 
the challenge of planning this wedding. Or you might say something like, I really want this promotion, so I'm gonna undertake getting this event done. I'm gonna undertake writing this presentation. I'm going to undertake presenting this presentation to the client. Um, so you're saying, I'm gonna take this on. I'm gonna do it. It's a little bit of a challenge, but I'm gonna do it. I can do it, I think I can do it. Now in a school or work setting, you could also say that this is a requirement. So um, students are required to undertake lab experiments or students are required to undertake 15 credits a semester to be considered full-time. Um, all of our employees are required to undertake working one weekend a month. So you're taking it on, or you might say something like, if you want this promotion, you've got to undertake some more responsibility. If you were going to use undertaking, you would might say something like, this is a huge undertaking this is going to be a difficult undertaking. You might say something like that. Or you might say something like, my mentor thought this was going to be too much for me, so she discouraged me from doing this undertaking. Or she discouraged me from undertaking this work. So undertaking and taking on are kind of the same thing. They're, they are the same thing. You can use these interchangeably. As I've been giving you sentences, I've been thinking, is there a time when you can't say take on and undertake, taking on, undertaking? You could really use them interchangeably, meaning you can replace one for the other. So along those same lines, our next word is tackle. So tackle means you're gonna take something on. You're gonna do it. You're gonna go after it get it done. So tackle is like undertake where this is going to be something that's a bit of a challenge. Again, how big of a challenge it's going to be depends on the situation. It can be a huge challenge or a small challenge, but there is something about it that you know is going to be a little bit difficult. It's going to be a little bit hard. Um, so you're going to tackle it. Oftentimes we talk about tackling a problem. Um, we talk about, you know, if you think about on the American football field, you think about uh, tackling people, or I guess um, with soccer football, um, you tackle people as well. And you're kind of, you are physically going after them to stop something from happening. Um, so you're, you're tackling a player. You're kind of taking on that player. You're taking on the responsibility of stopping that player. And so it's the same thing with, life. So if you're going to tackle a project, you're going to take the responsibility of getting that project done, of making sure it gets finished, of making sure it's right and it's done on time. So you're just tackling any situation, any situation that could be a challenge, that could be a little bit difficult. If you're having personal issues, you have to tackle them. You have to take them on. You have to deal with them to make sure that everything is right and good and the way that it should be. So you might say something like, I've been going through a really hard time, but I know this is something that I can tackle. I know this is something I can do. I know this is something I can take on. Um, you might say something like, I've been spending too much and I really need to tackle my finances. I've got to take them on. I've got to figure this out. I've got to deal with it. So we've done some synonyms and we need to do some antonyms too. So we're going to do three antonyms and they all really mean the same thing and you can really use them interchangeably. They are refuse, reject, and turn down. So when you refuse to do something, you're just saying no. No, I'm not going to do that. So maybe someone gives you a package. Will you accept this package? No, I refuse. I will not accept it. So you're just saying no. Um, so I refuse to take on this new project. I've got too much going on. I refuse to do this. Um, usually you don't say I refuse because that's a really strong word. It's a strong no. You might say, you know what? I can't really do this right now. I don't have enough time. 
and then someone else usually will go and talk about you and say, yeah, she refused to do it. He refused. He said he didn't want to. Um, so usually it's someone talking about something that you've done or said. They're talking about your behavior. Sometimes you will say, I absolutely refuse to do this, but that's really strong. And so in this case, you're probably a little bit upset. Maybe you've already said no, and now I'm, t I'm telling you again, I refuse. So at this point, it's strong words. Um, saying that someone refused, so if, if Sally refused to do it, she said, you know what, I really can't, I don't have time. But then you went and you talked to Ben, and you're like, Ben, Sally said no, she refused. Saying that is not mean. That's totally normal. People say that all the time. But when you say, I refuse to someone's face, that's when it's a little bit mean. But saying, hey, Sally refused. She said she didn't have time to do it. That's okay. That's normal. That's neutral. That's not positive or negative. That's not a big deal. All right, so let's talk about reject. So when you reject someone or something, you are also saying no. It is also mean. You would not say, I reject you to someone's face. That's super mean. I mean, I'm not saying you wouldn't say it. I'm just saying, if you say that, you are very mean. You are a mean person. Um, so the only way that a normal, nice person would say this is again, if it's like, I've told you no once. I've told you no twice. Okay, so now I'm just telling you I'm rejecting you. Please stop. Um, so you might say it in that way, but to say, no, I reject you. I, reje I reject this. I think you see that in like lawyer sh So dramatic. I reject you. Like that. Um, but in a normal everyday conversation, you're not going to go around saying, I reject you. I reject that. I reject. I reject. Because it's mean. It's just like a big word. That's, that's a little harsh. But again, you know, if... Sally says, you know, I'm so sorry. I don't want to go out with you anymore. Then someone, so Sally said that to me, um, then I might go and I might say, Sally rejected me. She says she didn't want to be with me anymore. Um, <laughs> so um, it could happen um, like that. So you're talking and you're saying, you're um, discussing, you're characterizing what someone else has done their behavior. Oh, she rejected me. Oh, did you hear that she rejected him? Ooh. So you might say it in that way and that's perfectly normal. That's, I mean, I guess it's kind of mean because you're gossiping, but that's perfectly normal. That's not overly mean. That's not super harsh. That's not an issue. And that's a very common way that this word is used. So turn down is really used in the same way. Um, as refuse and reject. So you can turn down work. You can say, no, thank you. Um, now you can actually say to someone's face, I'm going to have to turn you down um, or I'm going to have to turn that project down. You can say that to someone's face and that's fine. You are saying no. So you want to be, you know, polite and nice and use a very gentle tone when you say, I'm just, I'm going to turn you down. Um, but you can say that. It's not the same as, I reject you or I refuse. It's not like that. Um, and then you definitely can say to someone else, oh, she turned me down. She turned me down, bro. Um, you can definitely say it like that um, as well. Um, so turn down. Um, I don't have enough time. I'm going to have to turn that project down. Or I've been asking everybody, please don't turn me down. I really need someone to take this on. You could say it like that too. So please don't tell me no. Um, and you would say that more than you would say, please don't reject me. Although you can absolutely say, please don't reject me. Please don't refuse me. Um, reject is like, boop, like that's a no, that's a no to you. It's like a personal no. Um, so you, you're less likely to say, please don't reject me. You're more likely to say, please don't turn me down. And then please don't refuse me would kind of be the next one. Refuse is a little bit stronger. Reject is probably the strongest, then refuse. And then turn down is just, I mean, it's not neutral because you're saying no, but it's as neutral as no can be. It's the nicest way to say no. No, I'm going to have to turn you down. So guess what? 
there's a second way that you can use accept. And in this way, you are understanding that something is true. And it might be, it's taken you a long time to get to this place. It's taken you a long time to realize that something was true. Or it could just be like, yeah, yeah, that's true. I accept that. That sounds like a fact. Um, so maybe, um, I don't know, it's taken you a long time to believe that the earth is round. You just, you have been contemplating, thinking about that for years, just not sure if it was really round. Like, are we sure the earth isn't flat? But then somebody showed you something or told you something that made you go, you know what? I think you're right. The earth is round. I accept that. I accept it to be true. And so when you accept something in that way, you're just like, it is true. Um, so it could be something you've been thinking about, contemplating for a long time, or it could be something where someone was like, um, this is the most beautiful day we have had this month. And you're like, yeah, it is. I, and you accept that um, as true. Now, usually you don't say, I accept that as true. Usually it'll be somebody talking about you and they could be saying it in a nice way or a mean way. Um, but yeah, Elisa finally accepted that the earth was around that idiot. Um, so you could say it mean um, like that or you could say, Elisa finally accepted that the, that the earth is round. We were finally able to convince her to believe it. Um, and so you could say it in a nice way like that, like, yay, we've convinced you. Um, so accept, convince, believe, all of these words are used in a very similar way. And they all, now obviously when you're convincing someone, you are doing the thing that makes them accept or believe that something is true. But accept and believe, the way that accept is used in this way, are pretty interchangeable. I accept that the earth is round. I believe that the earth is round. The difference is, is when you accept something, you have to think about it. Maybe you thought about it for a second. Maybe you thought about it for years and years and years, but you have to think about it and go, yep, yeah, that's true. That's a fact, I believe it. So a synonym for this kind of accept that you will hear sometimes is to give credence to. So when we talk about giving credence to something, we're kind of like lending our support. So I want you to accept something as true. And so I'm going to give my support to it. Or maybe I don't necessarily want you to accept it, but maybe you're thinking about something, maybe like as a society, as a community, we're thinking about something and I'm going to go on the side of that thing being true. I'm going to go ahead and accept it or I'm going to act like I'm accepting it. So I'm giving credence to it. I'm like giving my support that it is true. You hear this a lot these days when we're talking about politics or something that a politician said or something that some cra uh, some famous person said. I almost said crazy. I did almost say crazy. And the reason I almost said crazy is because this is almost always used in a negative way. Like don't give credence to that. So if you start talking about this, if you start acting like you think it's true, if you start accepting it or acting like you're accepting it, you're giving credence to it. You're going to make other people accept it. You're going to make other people think that it's true. And so when someone says you're giving credence to something, they're almost always saying it is a bad thing that you are making this seem normal or you're making it seem like this is the truth. So in this case, you may not have 100% accepted the idea or the thing that they're talking about, the thing that they're saying you're giving credence to, but you haven't rejected it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be giving credence to it. So you might be in the middle or you might be curious or you might just want to stir the pot. You might just want to put it out there and see what people do and what people say. Um, but whoever's saying don't give credence to it they kind of know that you haven't fully accepted it. Um, now they might think that you've rejected it and that you're just stirring the pot 
or you're just saying things to get a reaction out of people or you don't fully understand the um, effect that your words can have or they might be trying to convince you like stop stop accepting this because it's wrong because of this because of this because of this and when you go out there and you post that on Twitter and on Instagram you're giving credence to it so they might use it like that as well so giving credence to is definitely it's not something that is like an everyday word but it's definitely something that when we talk about politics or what you know is on social media what some famous person is saying um, it's always something negative like whoever is in the majority does not agree with whatever it is doesn't mean it's right doesn't mean it's wrong it just means the majority the mainstream doesn't agree with it and so someone's saying don't give credence to it because you're going to make the people the outliers the people on the other side who do believe it you're going to make it seem like they're right you're going to make people accept the things that they're saying so our last one that we're going to do in this video is acknowledged So when we acknowledge information, we're talking about acknowledging information, we are saying, yeah, this is correct. This is true. We're accepting it. And we're doing it in a good way. We're acknowledging something that's positive. So we're not acknowledging a thing that's positive, but when we acknowledge something, it is positive. The fact that we are acknowledging it, the fact that we are saying this is real, this is true, this is right, is a positive thing. Thing. Now, the thing that we're acknowledging could be good or bad, but the fact that we're like, yay, we acknowledge it, that is a good thing. So you might be talking about a person, you might say they are acknowledged as an expert on this subject, or you could be talking about yourself and you're saying, I acknowledge that I made a mistake. So you could be talking about something good, I'm an expert in the subject, or something bad, I made a mistake. But whatever it is, you're saying it's true. And you're kind of accepting the idea also, in the case of accepting your mistake, acknowledging your mistake, you're accepting, you're taking responsibility, you're accepting that you've done something. Um, in the case of acknowledging that someone is an expert, you're accepting that they're really good at this. You're accepting that they're really smart at something. It's true. You made a mistake. It's true. They're at the top of this field. And so, there you have it. So we've taken the word accept, and perhaps we've learned a bunch of other words and how those are used as well. All right, so that is it. If you liked this video and want more like this, then please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you can get more videos like this. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.